Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. And so it begins. Committee will come to order. Two career diplomats testify on day one of open impeachment hearings into President Trump. After shattering a pair of record lows, would you believe temperatures actually getting warmer for the commute? To we'll find out what else is coming with it. Okay, Ben, but we begin with breaking news. State regulators confirm the public may be able to buy recreational marijuana as early as December 1st. Now, that date is months earlier than expected, but there are a whole lot of ifs yeah. that come along with it. So let's start things off here at 5 with Mara McDonald. Uh, Mara, just because the state gives the green light here doesn't mean that municipalities, cities, and towns will. Exactly, Devin. That's really the issue. You know, there are a lot of moving parts to recreational pots. So we went to a legal expert who is handling this on the licensing side to explain why all of us here in the metro aren't necessarily going to see any of this December 1st. Take a look. Voters may have approved recreational pot last year, but it has taken this long to come up with the infrastructure and rules governing how it's going to work. And while the state says medical marijuana facilities that have the correct recreational license can start selling recreational pot December 1st, that doesn't mean it's going to show up here in the metro immediately. And here's why, according to Plunkett Cooney's marijuana expert, Jeff Schroeder. Municipalities are going to have to opt in to the recreational law in order to have recreational sales in that community. For example, the city of Detroit, which has over 70 dispensaries right now, all for medical use, has not opted in to allow adult use uh, recreational marijuana. And that's not expected to happen until next year. And Detroit is not alone. The vast majority of communities in the metro have not opted in, but may in the future. So where can you find recreational pot starting December 1st? We are probably going to see some recreational marijuana available in early December, mostly in rural communities, not necessarily in the Detroit area and the heavily populated areas. Back here live, the bottom line is expect to see more of a slow rollout of recreational pot here in the metro. It really depends on how local communities decide they whether they want to opt in or opt out. We're live downtown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Look for. And the clock ticking now on those decisions in a new way. All right, Mara. Now, our other top story at five, a 13-year-old girl killed in a snowmobile crash. This in northern Oakland County. Yeah, this is video from Sky 4 over the intersection where it happened in Independence Township. Our Sean Lay spoke to a witness who saw it happen, and he joins us now with more Sean. Kimberly, how awful yesterday. Kids all across our metro area so excited for the snow and a snow day. That included two 13-year-olds, both from Orion Township, visiting Dad in Independence Township out for a snowmobile ride with Dad, with an adult, and this just had tragic results. I seen one snowmobile on the edge with um, someone laying on the ground um, and another person, the snowmobile was kind of in the middle of the road, and another person was... Um, checking the person out that was on the ground. Sonda Andrews is shaking the scene she drove up on late Tuesday it was so intense she knew something terrible had happened. A snowmobile accident and it appeared one person was badly hurt. They all had helmets on from what I seen. The Oakland County Sheriff's Office says a 55 year old man from Independence Township was driving one snowmobile here on Eston Road. Behind him, his 13 year old son driving a snowmobile with his 13 year old girlfriend on the back, identified as Alexandria Lambert, both from Orion Township. The dad slowed and pulled over. Deputies say the son did not stop and slammed into him from behind. Alexandria did not survive her injuries. Yeah, if they hit him from behind, yes, they had to have been going too fast had to have and man that that kills me that he passed away the police there were seven eight police cars out here they had the road blocked both sides my buddy called and said somebody died in front of your house i said i had no idea Absolutely awful. Here's a statement from Lake Orion Schools. Quote, we are devastated to learn of the tragic death of one of our students. Our heartfelt condolences go to the family 
and the friends. It appears on mom's social media account that Alexandria was involved in band and had a sister, and their friends are saying tonight that the parents are just heartbroken. Back to you. I'm sure they are. Sean, just out of curiosity, is snowmobile riding legal on those types of roads? You know, we check with MSP just to be sure. It is not. Some parts of the UP uh, you can ride on the shoulders, not on common roads here in the lower peninsula. However, when we talk to neighbors today, it's, it's very common out yeah. there to see snowmobilers enjoying a nice day. I'm sure. Just awful. All right. Sean, thanks. And we're reminded of the dangers of winter sports, but it is uh, awfully good news for a lot of people to know that that season is upon us. And in fact, all of this snow and cold means here's Alpine Valley. Ski season officially now begins in Metro Detroit, and that comes uh, pretty early in November. So if you're going to hit the slopes, though, you're going to have to bundle up. That's right. The bitter cold has uh, set not one but two records, and the sun didn't do much at all today to warm things <laughs> was up. Was that out there? Was there no. one? Let's get over to Ben to see uh, if we're going to get a break anytime soon. Eventually we will guys. In fact, we've seen the coldest that seven this morning was not lucky, but put it in the rear view mirror because it only does get warmer from here. We're 22 right now and you probably heard behind Sean in that live shot. The wind is noticeable. Wind chills are down into single digits in some spots. Pontiac at eight, Mount Clements at eight. So it actually feels like what a lot of those thermometers were reading this morning when we woke up with those record lows Four live radar showing blue, but it is all elevated, not making the surface. Eventually tonight, we will see some flakes, but it's likely going to be pretty much close to midnight and going into tomorrow morning's commute. Look at those temperatures, though. They're rising overnight. We'll see how high they get tomorrow and how much snow to expect coming up. Devin. All right, Ben, let's get to some breaking news. If you're just tuning in moments ago, President Trump addressed the first public impeachment hearings against him. I hear it's a joke. I haven't watched. I haven't watched for one minute. I want to find out who is the whistleblower. And because the whistleblower gave a lot of very incorrect information, including my call with the president of Ukraine. What we watched begin earlier today is just the fourth time this has happened in the history of our nation. You perhaps watched it unfold all day here on Local 4. Alice Barr joins us from Capitol Hill with some of the key takeaways and what's next. In a rare and momentous mood. The House Intelligence Committee gavels in the first public impeachment hearing against President Trump. Democrats laying out their case that the president abused his power by pressuring Ukraine for his own political gain. The matter is as simple and as terrible as that. While Republicans attack the whole process. What we will witness today is a televised theatrical performance. The first open testimony comes from two career diplomats. William Taylor, the top U.S. envoy in Ukraine, testifying that President Trump froze critical military aid to Ukraine in a bid to force a public announcement of investigations into his rivals, including Joe Biden. To withhold that assistance for no good reason other than help with the political campaign made no sense. It could not be explained. It was crazy. Ambassador Taylor adding that a staff member overheard a phone call between President Trump and his ambassador to the European Union. The member of my staff asked Ambassador Sondland what President Trump thought about Ukraine. Ambassador Sondland responded that President Trump cares more about the investigations of Biden. Republicans focusing on the timeline, arguing that Ukraine's President Zelensky didn't know military aid was being held up during his July call with President Trump at the heart of the impeachment inquiry. President Zelensky went on to confirm a number of things, that there was no pressure, that there were no conditions, that there were no threats. And hitting the core of their defense of the president, Republicans noting that aid was eventually released. He didn't announce he was going to do an investigation before the aid happened. That is true. But only after Congress began an investigation. Only after the president's lawyers learned of a whistleblower complaint. Both sides aiming to persuade a nationwide audience while the man at the center of the storm. It's a witch hunt, it's a hoax. Says he's not even watching. Ousted Ukraine Ambassador Marie Ivanovich testifies publicly on Friday with three more public hearings set for next week. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. All right, Allison, of course, we've all heard so much about the phone call. Well, the president, President Trump, says he could release audio and a transcript from a second call, which actually occurred before the one to which we've become so accustomed with the president of Ukraine. He could release that tomorrow.
New at five, two people are found shot to death inside a home on Detroit's east side. It happened late this morning, right near the corner of Kelly and Maross. Our Victor Williams is there live tonight. Victor, police had to tear the door down to get in. Yes, Kimberly, they had to force their way into this home right here on Kelly. And when they made their way inside, they found that grisly discovery. Right now, there are still a lot of unanswered questions. We know that two bodies were found inside. However, we don't know the circumstances leading up to them dying. I was looking out the window and I saw him standing in front of my house and I would say, what happened? You know, I thought they was coming here. Multiple police units swarmed this house on Kelly early Wednesday morning, responding to the call of someone being deceased inside. When officers arrived and made entry, they found the bodies of a 29 year old woman and a 47 year old man, both dead from apparent gunshot wounds to the body. The sergeant asked me had I heard anything. No, I hadn't heard anything. I'm sorry. Neighbors wouldn't go on camera, but they tell local four a couple lived here with several kids. It's sad. I mean, is a young couple? Where are the children? That's a question that's still yet to be answered. Police aren't releasing the names of the two found, but neighbors say the couple that lived here were no strangers to domestic disturbances and could be heard fighting all the time. And we are really in the early stages of this investigation. Once police release those names, of course, we will keep you guys updated both on air and online on our website, clickondetroit.com. Reporting live, Victor Williams, Local 4. Clear, all right, Victor. Today, some Detroit kids got a lesson that could help them for the rest of their lives. Here tonight, how a famous billionaire is teaching the next generation why it's so important to suit up for success. Doc. Well, it's a new warning on 18 deadly germs, including the one experts call the nightmare bacteria. Ahead, the superbugs that the CDC is most worried about and what they want everyone to do to help fight them. Students inside of schools had to go back home today in the warm because of this. Buses breaking down while transporting students. So what was happening? What's wrong with these buses?